Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh. My Zoom didn't want to let me in this morning. <laughs> Wondering if we were going to meet this morning or not. Yeah, I'm ready to call you. <laughs> yeah, that would have been okay. Yes, uh, my Zoom and I were having sudden very ugly word exchange going on a moment ago. It's so cute. Not really. How are you guys this morning? Doing well. Yeah. Cody, did you get out into nature this week? Yeah, a little bit. Good. Not as much as I did at camp, but that <laughs> forced to be in nature at camp, which is which is wonderful. <laughs> you wish you could go council camp every couple weeks. Uh, well, not every couple of weeks. I wouldn't mind doing it once a month, but <laughs> <laughs> I like I like my bed better than I do the camp beds. So maybe if we had better beds. It, it sounds like the perfect job for you would be um, um, director of a camp grounds. Yeah, right, where you could live, be, live there. That would be pretty cool. We had a friend in seminary who was the uh, Camp Christian, is the Georgia Disciples Creek Camp. He mm -hmm. lived at Camp Christian. Um, I know during seminary and maybe before or after that, and and you know was the director not of the camps but of the of the campground. And I remember um, my senior pastor was on that board and they went down and they found deer stands. <laughs> they yeah. said, well, we bet he likes to like that. Yeah. Which was okay with them. How's everybody? Doing good. Good, Jean, you're on mute. Shelly's on mute too. Here we go. Cindy, I like your shirt. Oh, thank you. Well, we have a funeral today at the church. Oh. 92 year old. 92. I see. We grow them old up here. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Nice. Nice. Okay, coming out of this past week, um, I wanted to respond, and I don't remember if it was. Well, I think it was Cindy or Shelly, one of you, who um, you were thinking about an accountability partner, but they weren't as spiritually mature. That's my word. As Me. You are. That was, yeah. So, Cindy, I thought about that, and um, and it's not about the spiritual maturity, the, a gap there. It really is somebody who is... Um, who is willing to be honest, to do the reading, you know, the scripture reading there is meant to be pretty voluminous. You get to choose. And, um, you know, Bill, my Bill, um, when his account, with his accountability partners, and he started, since we started this back in the 90s, we started doing this, these, um, he, uh, they'll read every single day, they'll read whatever they agreed to. And it could be a book, like a book of the Bible. So, you know, they may say, we're going to read First Corinthians this week. And every day they'll read First Corinthians. To me, that's absolutely crazy. So, you know, my accountability partners and I have, um, we'll take like chapters or sections of, of books and uh, and read them. If we were to do a first Corinthians, we would do it over the span of the week. So yeah, I, I guess it depends on how much time you have. Uh, and, and you make it to work for you. But the key is to be getting into the word, you're into the scripture. And that's why you take chunks of, of scripture to read. And you both, you know, are accountable for that. And I, I think it says in there, then when you meet an accountability group when, for your weekly group, um, that question, did you read everything? You know, did you, did you complete the reading? And if you say no, then you repeat the reading. Mm -hmm. And um, what somebody told me once that their accountability partner, they were in a, a group of three, and one of them would never finish the reading. And when they said after four weeks, what the heck is going on? He said, oh, I love this so much. I wanted to read it again. <laughs> so they said, read it this week and we're moving on whether or not you're with us. So, yeah. So 
when does it become a mentoring thing? Um, these are not meant to be mentoring. These are meant to be, be um, spiritual accountability, which we need to keep, keep moving. Um, mentoring is going to go in a different place. Uh, so it's mutual accountability then that keeps you grounded and um, centered and growing um, because you'll grow and more than, well, hmm, how do I try and think that one through? Uh, where there's a disparity between um, spiritual maturity, you know, I think in the sharing that person may grow right? So there's that opportunity for growth. The, the most time you're not going to spend an hour. And again, my bill, if he's, if he's on, on the phone or with his accountability partner for more than half an hour, that's pushing it. I mean, they, be, they, they fit it into business, busy schedules and um, aren't as relational, I guess, as I am. So, uh, but so they're, they're in and out, but it's, it's, um, it's focusing in on those questions. It's, uh, it's, it's reading that scripture. It's sharing really basically what stuck out to me in, in the scripture this, this week, but the conversation, like in my group, it's, well, definitely the, the conversation starts to get deep. And so there's that mentoring in, in a sense that's going on. Right. Um, but here's the biggie if when it okay so like my friend and I Sherry and I we use this and we've been in accountability for probably six or well no it's been longer than that seven years at, at least seven years now and uh and we would never multiply our group we would never bring another person into our group but when we're doing this as pastors or leaders of ministries and we're doing this as a uh as a, a ministry tool or not a tool but as one of our ministries we decide we want to have a journey group ministry when we start this with another person and as i said that the real challenge with this is we want to be transparent because we're, we're modeling what we want them to do, but we can't be fully transparent, right? Uh, they, we just, you know, uh, did you give into an addiction? Well, I'm not about to tell some people what some of my addictions are. You know, I just, I, I hold confidence on a lot of ministers' addictions, and those are some, this, many of them are things you would never, ever, ever share into your congregation. And so you can't trust somebody with that. Um, I told you, I would say too, about, about my um, experience that bit me big in the butt. Uh, there in Bellevue, that's when I started, was it? yeah, I was at Bellevue Christian Senior Pastor when I, I started doing these. And um, I, I, the, it was supposed to multiply, but I found out right there at the start why they don't multiply. Uh, I'll go back to that. But um, I worked with Kathy Lee, who had been the chair of the search committee that called me and uh, had been board chair and all these others. So my intention was to do this with, with Kathy and then bring another person in. And she was always reticent to do that, but I got to. And, and here's another thing. I was doing my doctorate in a time where mega churches were really coming into fullness and we were being mentored by, by um Mega church ministers. Some of them were mega church ministers, or in mega churches, or and in church plants and whatnot. And I mean, the, the, then the dress was you wore khakis and you know comfy shirts. You know these were out on the west coast. All of them are men. They don't have women in leadership. And you get together and and you know guys, this is the place you can just bear your soul and put yourself out there the way you can't you know can't with women. No or you can't with, with men, other men and stuff like that. It, it doesn't work for women and it doesn't work for a lot of us in mainline churches. And it doesn't work uh, even more with uh, us in mainline churches where we don't, uh, we don't get to lift up our, um, where the minister is not the minister and is gonna be there as long as the minister wants or doesn't really mess up, right? So, um, you know, these guys are just, they're just doing it. So I thought, oh, okay, that's the model. You know, that's what we're, that's, that's, that's where the way it goes. Mm -mm. Yeah. So I would meet with this woman every single week. We'd walk and we'd do our 
accountability and we talk and the church was extremely extremely conflicted i mean not conflicted but had so much conflict in it and when the pushes and the shoves kept uh came down and kathy was one of these she always wanted to make things always wanted to make things right and she just wanted peace and and all and in it just we we doubled within a couple of years. So we went from 99 to, to right at 200. And we were seeing over 300 at Christmas Eve services. I mean, in the church was, it had been founded in the late 50s and this was in 2000 to 2004. So we still had original members and they'd gone from being very large to very small, to very large, to very small. And they were in this very small place. So there's a lot of control stuff that's going on and Kathy couldn't stand it. And so she just, you know, kept swinging back. And I thought, oh, you know, I'm helping build her into a, into a, you know, more mature disciple. So when it all came down and I'm going, okay, we, we, we've got to do this, this, and that, and we used Hauk's, um, uh conflict uh, antagonist in the church and everything. She started to say things like, "Are you, I think that's your own stuff working out there. I, I think that that um, that you're just you know you're being prejudiced about that, and, and that you really that you really don't get it. Blah blah blah. And this is why. And you know it would have been things that I had shared way back when, and you know kind of growing up stuff. And so I just say, don't do it. It can, it can turn on you um, real easily, right? And then there are, as I said, the other boundaries issues. So there are, you know, your, um, if you've had boundaries trainings, um, at least the ones that they did <laughs> until seven years ago, every three years, um, you know, a huge piece of that. I, there was this question Donna Roseheim would ask, um, she was one of our trainers. It was um, uh, your refrigerator's gone out. The refrigerator's gone out in the parsonage. The church hasn't bought it, but this church member has come to you and says he wants to give you a fridge. Do you take it? Mm -hmm. and, and the the technical hardcore answer is no, because then that that person may think that they have a um, um, not a bargaining chip, right? But oh come on, I'm your friend. You know I did this did this for you. So it's best not to take, take gifts in that to be very careful. So when we like choose somebody, then they then it may be they Oh, I've got ministers um, ear. And, um, you know, or another is, Oh, my gosh, how did he get chosen? What about the rest of us? Oh, pastor has favorites. So we avoid that at all costs as well. So that's the that's that. But okay, back to journey groups. The hardest thing I've watched over and over again is that the group, the, the people get really close in the group and they don't want to multiply. And so we have to let people know up front, not our own personal accountability partner, but we have to let our uh, people in our church know that this is both for our own spiritual growth and our, um, you know, our, our maturity, but it's also so that we can, um, we can multiply them to multiply the church. Here's my husband. Thank you. Do you want to say hello to everybody? Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> hello, Bill. Hello. <laughs> my Bill. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. All right. Um, so, bye, Bill. Bye, Bill. <laughs> bye, Bill. Bye, Bill. Um, okay. So. Um, <clears throat> he'll be seeing you in six to eight weeks, Cody. Six to eight weeks. All right. Glad. Glad to do it. <laughs> um, let's see. But but my Bill doesn't have favorites, so just like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, William, will you close my door? Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, okay, yeah, they don't want to. They don't want to multiply. So you've got to be prepared to multiply from the beginning. And as you're praying for each other's people, you want to be praying for who you're going to, whom you're going to invite to the group next, right? So you're two who you invite three and then remember when you're three you're pregnant so the fourth one comes in and you and you multiply and i said that you can work your way out of there within uh within uh, uh 
two groups. So what you'll do is you may bring five in or when you're getting ready to, to bring a fifth, then, okay, so let's see how I can do it. All right, so here's the originals. This, this is you and another person. And you bring a third person on. This is you, remember. So uh, this is you, this is the next person. You're pregnant, you're gonna bring on the fourth, so it's time to split, right? So what you're going to do is go ahead and bring a fourth one in. But when you're three, you're gonna start not kind of being there all the time. So these two who really know what's going on, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna be kind of hey, not running the show because nobody runs it, but guiding it, you know, continuing. So you've got these two, they're there. And now here comes a fourth. There's the fourth and, and the two originals, one goes, one goes with that one, the other one goes with this one. So you're always taking your originals and then multiplying out from there. And then you'll be over here, you'll add that four and somehow that works too. A but, flow chart. Yes, a, we, flow chart. a flow chart, exactly, exactly. Somebody told me it's like um, Amway. We went to and we were invited. We've done Amway a couple, three times. And a friends of ours invited us to an Amway gathering at their house. But what they told us was they invited us to, to games, to game night. We'd had game night with them before. And so we went over there to play games thinking we were, it was just Tim and Adash. And um, uh, it was a joke on us. I'll tell you, there were all these cars. And Bill looked at me, he said, it's an Amway meeting. I said, it's an Amway meeting. I'm, I'm, what are you talking about? And he says, look at all these cars. And we're like, yeah, and we walk in and here are the big, there's the big flip charts, white flip charts they're going to write on. He said, this is an Amway deal. I'm like, no, no, it's not. He said, just wait. So they start laying out all this stuff. And, and Bill, at one point, was, are there any questions? And Bill raised his hand. He said, is this Amway? Uh, well, and it was whatever the new name was. And Bill said, Let, let's just let's just be clear on this. It helped me be clear. He says, so he said, was your previous iteration or name Amway? And they said, yeah. And he said, thank you, Adosh and Tim. And out we went. So we never had game night with them again. <laughs> kind of like Amway with the flow charts. Multiply, multiply. But Tim, Neil Cole, not Tim, Neil Cole, who who is the one who introduced us to this. This is how he started churches. So he would get another person, they'd get another person, another person, off they went and they just kept multiplying up enough that they had a, a base for a church. So it's an awesome way to, to really build your church and it works, but you have to work it. Yeah, the last church I consulted with, I gave it to them and I started with the minister's wife. So it was his minister's wife and me. And um, and I, so we did, we were praying for our people that for their relationship with Christ, but we were praying for that third person. And I don't, didn't really know the congregation. It wasn't mine to invite them. So Chris, you know, she had a couple people and it was like, who do you want to invite first? So we did and we were doing okay. And the next one came in and it was time to, to branch and they just, they just wouldn't follow through. Really, the bottom line was they wouldn't follow through at all. So be intentional up front. And up front. I think that's part of the intention. Okay. Questions? Hey, I, yes, I have. Ask, ask. I have a couple. Okay, good. <laughs> number, number one on the final paper, uh, do you want footnotes, endnotes, bibliography, or just name and page or yeah just put the the books at the end if you draw in anything other than fowler well there there's been a number of resources so yeah um just anybody you you quote if you use parentheses i don't care what what citing you use mla or blah 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 um chicago manual um yeah, just put them, put it in there, and then you can use the parentheses, which is, I think, MLA still, uh, footnote it, whatever. Just to know that, so that you've got it, you know, on record if anybody would hey. read it. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hi. Well, you can see the frown. How is that happening? <laughs> What's her name? Lakin. 
Lakin. Hello, Miss Lakin. These are my classmates and my teacher. How is that thing getting on there? That's those pictures. <laughs> Who are they? <laughs> There's this Go back upstairs to mama. Hmm? Yeah. No. No. Okay. Oh. Okay. The second question, question is I uh, I not, must have missed it because I don't understand how uh, or where Fowler told us how to help somebody get from one stage to another. Yeah. I don't think he does. I mean, I don't have recollection of any of that. Um, let me see, I'm coming in here. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> I really, and you guys, you correct me um, on this. And my, my take on him is that he is, uh, he is explaining, he is empirical in his, in his methods. So he's looking at what is there and, and he's communicating that. But um, oh, I should be better up on this, obviously. Um, Okay, so, all right, so he's talking here, I'm looking at page 150. A factoring initiating transition to stage three is the implicit clash or contradictions in stories that leads to reflection on meanings. The transition to formal operational thought makes such reflection possible and, and necessary. So he's, he's telling us that's what happens, but how do you, uh, I, in a way, I think your question is, how do you manufacture that? Well, the question is for the final paper that we have a person that we know is in stage three, but how do we get them past the wall? Sure. So, okay, so that's, that's Hagberg. And she's got the, you know, like the worship services that are down there, ways to help and address um uh right so they're in a way she is creating experiences okay right. okay um have we had wait, wait a minute what class would it have been um oh hmm. <laughs> education and leader development together is that the Come one we had Believe me, Chris, I don't remember after nine years which is who I had later. Okay, so um, in there we use Bobby Clinton's um, uh, uh, phases of leadership, stages of leadership, and in each of those, uh, in each of those stages, he talks about experiences that that um, that we have not that we have to have, but that help us move from one stage to the next. And, and the key for remembering that would be pre-Christian, pre-Christian, Christian, disciple, apostle. Do you remember, does that ring any bells? No. Okay, we probably haven't had education and leader development together yet. Um, so what we focus on, <coughs> focus on in education, <coughs> Oh my goodness! In education and leader development, is that um, is the movement from being pre-Christian to being a Christian, right? Which is usually where we take people and to becoming a disciple. That's that maturing faith, and then from uh, being a disciple to being an apostle, and that's how we live our faith in the world. So, I mean, some are missionaries, some are ministers and church planners. Apostles are uh, are te are, um, are <coughs> literally those who go out up epistole and epistole is a letter so an apostle is one who takes uh, takes the message out um so that's you get jesus's disciples they were apostole pa is an apostole he takes it out so we have apostole in there but we tend to think of those who go out as missionaries and those tend to be vocational right and they're overseas not domestic so you know, one, uh, one kind of, uh, or there's domestic 
missionaries. Uh, um, and that another piece of that, and I don't hone in on it, but as I'm talking about it, I really want to switch up on that, is um, it's how do we live our faith out? What our vocation? So, you know, uh, we could, um, we may be a paralegal um, or work in a courthouse or be a teacher. And we're, that's how we're living out our that's what we were called to do, Big C called to do, right? And so we're an apostole into our community. How do we live the, our call? What is our call? And so helping people to identify that. So the resource then that um, one of my key resources is by um, J. Robert Clinton. I think I said C, J. Robert Clinton, Bobby Clinton. And he, um, uh, he works with this model that's like, um, and um, I can't remember all the particulars off the top of my head. I just know there are six phases. Uh, anyways, uh, and I know what the last one is, but for each one, and he's very, char uh, very uh, charismatic and evangelical. So a lot of what he says, these experiences are then um, they don't necessarily translate to us. Hold on one second. I'm going to go into my drive, so I don't think I'll disappear from the screen. Um, where is my drive? Right there. Well, that sounds a lot like the stages of faith, though, only based on discipleship. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Clinton. Um, okay, we need stages of faith. I know where to find it. Resource. Um, Resources, there you are. There you are. Hello. Okay, I'm going to post it. If you're on a phone or iPad, you may not be able to download this, but I'm going to put it into the. I'm going to put it into the chat. Um, come on, open, 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 open. <laughs> My computer. I just probably need to reboot it today. Um, spiritual development. Leader development. And leader development. Um, resources. Come on. Come on. Okay. I'm glad to find out I'm not the only one that talks to my computer. I, this Technology is great when it works. Like I just saw you in here. Where the heck are you? <laughs> I ask that all the time. Okay. Between uh, iCloud and OneDrive and personal OneDrive, I'm, I'm losing files all the time. <laughs> okay, I just found it. It's up there. Now I'm going to try this. Um, you uh, do me a zoom. Let's see the page display. Stop. So, Jean, have you talked to your friend yet? You're on mute. You're on mute, Jean. Oh, yeah. Yes, I did go see her yesterday. Great. We had a nice visit and caught up, and we are. are She's learning how to use her phone better, so I don't have to travel quite so so often. And her daughter told me that son, that it was a miracle that I was actually able to show her how to use that phone 
And <laughs> she said, you may have created a monster because now she's texting and everything. But oh, we, did have a, we did have a good time and we're ready to begin. Praise God. Yay. Yeah. Yay. Okay, I've put it on the screen. Can you all see it? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Let's see it now if I can make it. Oops. There we go. Okay. So, um, so yeah, you can see. All right. So this is the first. He calls them sovereign foundations. Come to recognize God is God. Cultivate a desire to respond positively to God and take advantage of what God is doing in one's life. Okay. So how do you, how do you, um, you know, what goes on in here, right? So if you're going to grow, you, you know, you've got to be in worship, fellowship with other Christians, engaging in mission, um, which means service beyond the doors of the church, Bible study, and faith learning. So probably you notice that those are some basics that the church needs to be offering, right? And who do, and, and so who influences you? Hello, do you hear, is Fowler in here? Your family, your friends, <laughs> right? Your experiences and your circumstances. So then let's see, oops, come back here. Phase two, inner life growth. So now we're talking about the spiritual growth. It's personal growth and, and then expand your ministry. And so you've got these integrity checks. These are these experiences that test our integrity. You know, are we integrous people? Or, you know, am I an integrous person or not? Uh, in what situations am I? Am I not? And that's then going to um, help deepen our values, convictions, uh, helps, um, uh, you know, temptation is one of the ways that, you know, um, uh, temptation how do we handle temptations that would be the question about addictions i would say in journey groups um oh and our relationship with with our spouse or significant other uh, uh you know our calling uh, there's a difference between um testing our calling and and um or not not being sure about our calling uh and then saying Oh yeah, I've I've been called, but not acting within, you know, within the spirit of your calling. Um, obedience check um, about possessions and giving. Do you gather more than you give? Um, are you ready to trust God? Um, and then you can see a, a recognition of God's voice and understanding of God's voice, obedience to God's voice. Right now we're talking kind of, you know, I don't know what would that be about stage. I guess we're moving more into stage three there, perhaps. And then word checks. Um, um, the word checks have to do with the Bible. Are we looking at the Bible? What are, you know, are, you know, that question, what, what convicted you or what attacked you, right? What did you read in scripture that attacked you that week? That's another way of asking what convicted you. Originally, that was the word I used, was convicted you. What convicted you? this week, like what really hit you? I just finished a devotion um, uh, entry for the Phillips Advent study. And um, the scripture I was given and used was Psalm 80. And it's one of these bartering Psalms where, you know, the whiny, I just hate whiny in the scripture, in the Psalms, you know, oh God, you've forsaken us. How could you do that to your people? You know, you said, you, you made us to do this. You made, we're your chosen ones, but now we're, you know, we're being tromped on and our enemies are mocking us. Please, you can save us. Why wouldn't you save us? Please come down. And if you do, we'll worship you. We'll, we'll never turn our backs on you again. And I hate that because you're supposed to be worshiping and being in relationship with him anyway. So you're going to say, Hey God, you know, if you'll do that. So, you know, I say that I hate those kind of Psalms, but perhaps one of the reasons I dislike those Psalms is because they convict me. And what is it? <laughs> I try to barter with God, right? You know, Oh God, really, I'll read my Bible a little bit more if you help me find that perfect Christmas present or just, <laughs> you know, right? quid, quid pro quo relationship. <laughs> there it is. Yes. Oh my goodness. How many of us have that? Um, ministry maturing, right? You're going to, now you're inspiring others. 
Um, yeah, so, and that takes you to where you plateau. See, I guess that's kind of the wall there. You plateau, that's where you're gonna, you're gonna stay. And again, now we're talking about levels of ministry, but we have to be mature in our faith if we're gonna progress from that. Otherwise, it's just a um, kind of like a, an empty shell or a hollow foundation and it will crash and crumble beneath us. And, and you know, one of the ones who comes to mind right now is Billy Hybels, who started Willow Creek Christian Church, first, first mega church plant, right? At one point was the largest church in, the, um, in North America, actually. And, um, and he was having inappropriate relationships with uh, women in his congregation. Um, and so after, golly, how many years, 30 years or so uh, in, his, in his congregation, so many good works, uh, not just there in, in Chicago and Illinois and across, across North America, but out into the world. And it's all gone. It's lost. And that church is having a lot of trouble recovering right now. Um, yeah, a lot of trouble recovering. And it's because that spiritual peace wasn't there. And, and in retrospect, um, Willow Creek, a number of years ago, did a survey of their congregation. And what they found was even though they had all of these small groups going and whatnot, the spiritual depth wasn't there. And they, uh, they had to go back and start figuring out, wow, what are, are, what are we not doing and what do we need to do to really bring the spiritual down? Our people can talk Bible, you know, they're great leaders. We've got an awesome structure going on. People do it for Jesus, but the spiritual part isn't there. And so then they started to, uh, to put into place um, to infuse their spirit or their small groups and their worship ministries with those experiences, more spiritually focused retreats go on there. And, uh, and, you know, you hear me say, you can only go as far as the leader goes, right? It's that whole uh, law of the lid, right? If you're, if you're a five leader, people who are six, seven, eight, nine, ten leaders, they won't stay with you. They'll go somewhere else to get the leadership they need. But everybody else will plateau out there. And that's that basically is what it looks like happened in at, at Willow Creek. That that Billy got caught up in he just he was a youth leader in a church. So, and he hadn't had all of the mentoring that he needed. And he was, uh, uh, and not spiritual, spiritual mentoring. And he jumped in it and he had all the charisma. He's leader par excellence, but he didn't go up because he got sidetracked with all this other piece. And he probably was never really fully exposed to it. So he couldn't bring it into his leadership. It couldn't go into the depths of the congregation, he plateaus out and then ends up crumbling himself. And I've watched that over and over and over again. The guys who founded, um, um, <laughs> oh, come on, it's right there. Uh, in Australia, Hillstone, the Hillstone uh, Church, and I believe it's the, the congregation here in the States, um, same thing, uh, just crumbling, incredible ministry, but he, uh, he didn't continue the spiritual aspect of it, circumvented it. So anyways, I've got it up there. I can post this if I don't remind me, um, and I'll post it this week as one of the resources uh, for you to look at. But we do, we do work with that in, in uh, education leader development. And in there, I took all of this and I've turned it into a, a program, a ministry for coaching, a coaching model that you can use to, um, to work with each pers person in your congregation and help them progress. But you got to have the spiritual foundations, which to go back to Fowler, he's going to explain what those are. And I think that Clinton does a good job of, of taking those and, and breaking them down without, without saying what they are. Right. 
And remember, there's a difference between small T truth and big T truth. And a lot of times what we get into fights about in church um, is little T truth and not the big T's. And so um, I would say that Fowler and Clinton and Hagberg have, and, and any number of others, have a, a grip on the same big T truths. And that's why it comes and infuses out this way. Fowler's just the first one who can call it out and, uh, and apply it across religion. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. Other questions? We're rounding out 915. We're good. This week is pretty much an easy week. I've got some articles for you that uh, are, are different ways, people's takes, uh, if you will, on Fowler. Um, yeah, in different ways of interpreting one who doesn't like it at all and <laughs> offers an alternative. I held on to them. I thought about doing them last week, but I held on to them because I want you to just be able to look at them within your own, own lenses and... Uh, well, there was a question. Uh, here I go again. Nobody else speaks up. Uh, but there was a question with Tammy, I think it was, or a discussion about um, the spiral on Fowler and how we, how we can go from one stage and circle around and go back and come back again. Um, did we get that correctly? Yes. Tammy and I? Okay. Yep. Yeah, I did put that in there. I was talking to Bill about that. My Bill last night, as we were waiting uh, in the waiting room at my chiropractor's, our chiropractor's office. And um, I told him, I was thinking it was like an elevator in a way. And he's like, no, but elevators go up and down. Then I thought about Wonkavators, you know, like, do you watch, I love Willy Wonka. It's my favorite, the original, my favorite movie. And how the Wonkavator goes up and down, but over and around and, you know, can circle back. Uh, so in a way it's a wonk of but I was thinking of elevators because they go up and they go down, right? So you, you can move in between and you have those spaces in between, which is why he did not like the metaphor. He said, no, your metaphor isn't working. But I liked it because at some point you can be in between floors. And if the elevator gets stuck, you know, usually it's in between floors. And so, you know, are you on the fourth floor? Are you the fifth floor? You're kind of like in this void. You can you know you may move down you may move up um i'm wondering though when we're not fully say in stage four and we're in stage three we're kind of we're in between we're in that space in between and um you know that will go up but when you land right the elevator often goes like this when it lands um when it lands, when it gets, yeah. you'll feel the, the bump. Yeah. You know, there's that, there's that up and down there. I don't know. The metaphor may not work. I'm just tossing it out from the top of my head. For well, what? I can, I think I can see that, that we can sometimes have um, experiences in life that will, some tragedy, instant tragedy or something that will uh, question our, our, beliefs or uh, question God why usually, which seems to me would put you spiraling back down for a while anyway, until you come out of that spiral and work your way back up. Yeah. Yeah, it's putting language to different kinds of experiences, right? It's um, for those with addictions that are in recovery, um, a lot of times you're doing really well in recovery, but then something happens and you, it, it, it's it, a tragedy, say a tragedy. And what you have are your experiences of how, of how you've dealt with it in the past, or, you know, it's how, it, what you, your addiction is how you've always addressed things like that. So it's easy for people to fall off the wagon or to slip, you know, to use again, because that's just innately how, how you do that, right? So, so you kind of, you become, your addiction will show up again. And the strength of your program, you know, is what will, will 
hold you, how, how farther into that you are. Well, your, your, exa your example of your father and all is, is right there that he was probably up there along stage five and, that, and then the, the tragedy and he lost it all then. He spiraled all the way back down. Right. See, I would, I would say my dad wasn't out of five because if he was, he wouldn't have spiraled. I think that's what that fallacy is there. I think that he would have been, like, if I, ha if I can bring Clinton in, um, that he would have been higher up in, in, uh, in, in his uh, leadership capacities. He was a great leader but he didn't have the spiritual underpinning and that, okay. that became evident that he succumbed to that tragedy. Okay. The way he okay. Did. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, what really got me going when I was, when I was still a baby Christian and where my spiritual work is really honed is how is it that we, we can do all these really awesome things in the church. And yet when tragedy happens, and now I would say when temptation happens that we don't, you know, we lose, we just leave church, we get angry, we act out, we do, you know, all these really bad things. It's because the spiritual grounding isn't there. And that's why it's so important for us um, as church leaders to get it uh, in place. Mm. My personal investment. Okay, I need to pray unless there's any more questions. And this week is the um, is the question is or questions are one of them is yeah one of them is um, uh, what questions do you have? Put them out there, and we're all experts now, right? So let's <laughs> on them. And, um, I always hold to to answer because I want to see what you guys are coming up with and what you're doing with them. So. Um, yeah, there it is. Okay. All right. Let's see who has not yet prayed. Jean has prayed. Shelly, have you prayed yet? Yes, Cody, you've prayed. I believe so. Okay. Well, Shelly, would you pray for us again today? <laughs> Wrong button, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get off mute. <laughs> <laughs> Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for the opportunity to gather together and to discuss our faith and discuss how to bring others into your world and your life. We love you and praise you and be with each of us as we go through the week and just give us your strength to do all we need to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. All right, let's see. I am going to go up and post this right now, um, this Clinton chart. And um, yeah, good Sabbath, Shabbat to you. Tov Shabbat. Sabbath. All right. Thank you. See you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.